Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. For a, over a year, I have been wanting to make a cornucopia. Typically, it's the U.S. Thanksgiving time that brings the thought back to me. And I've studied this for quite a while. And I, I thought I should make one, but it was it's real tough to get kind of a curved shape to it. I thought of tapering the segment rings and figured out a jig for that, but then I wasn't really happy with what it would take in the end. So I decided to use negative space in this one and in effect just make the rings. There are 22 rings here and then tie them together with wire so that those, the extra space that would accommodate the curve is actually negative space and it actually then contributes to the cornucopia. I like it. There, it could be improved, but it's good. So, but every one of these is a 12 segment ring. This first one is of cherry, the others of, are of oak. Each ring has been split in half and then glued back together again. So why did I do that when I'm just going to make a ring anyway? Well, if you look at a segmented ring like this, each of these joints is end grain. And so as a as a glued up piece of wood, this is very, very weak and it could break, especially when I get it down to the final wall thickness. So in, usually a segmented bowl relies on a bricklay uh, glue up pattern to have end grain or side grain to side grain instead of all the end grain. So this is what gives a segmented vessel its strength is the side grain coming together. For the cornucopia, didn't have that option, so that's why I split the ring. In the case of the oak, I had a lot of oak veneer, so I glued that in between the two layers. That is probably a mistake because it made the rest of the work a little bit harder. I should have stuck to the cherry one. So let's make this cornucopia. Before we get into the video, I want to show you a few things that I found extremely handy in making all these rings because every ring is a different size so I had to go big, well, go small, do the inside, do the outside, do the front side, inside, outside, inside, you name it, we had to do it. So one thing that's very handy of course is my threaded wood face plates. If, you're, if you don't have a tap for your lathe spindle, get one. They're extremely useful, very versatile, I love them. Of course, I used my coal gels extensively in this project to do the rings. The bumpers here hold the rings on the, both the inside and the outside. But this is not the entire answer either. Because as you're cutting down through a ring, you don't want to hit the, the jaws, the metal of the jaws, and ruin your tools. So I actually made a set of discs of, uh, in this case, OSB, uh, in different diameters from 10 in one inch decrements down to uh, what is that about five and that made it so that as I cut down through the the ring I hit this which is sacrificial instead of the the uh, coal jaws but the other part of this is that if you're coming down on the outside it's really really hard to put a piece of sac sacrificial wood on the outside that's again where I used my face plates to great advantage but cold jaws are not the entire answer either. There's times when I wanted to do the outside of the ring and <clears throat> needed access to the entire surface. So I made these face plates. This is a face plate threaded for the headstock. This is a face plate threaded for the live center that I have on my lathe. And uh, each of this consists of just a, a piece of wood but has a T-nut embedded in it that I can screw into with a quarter inch hex nut. Now in use, I put a large layer, a couple of large layers of particle board, the old chipboard stuff, on here, and then turned it down to where it would fit just as a tenon into my ring. So that then the ring would be wedged between these two and I could access the entire outside part of that ring. But I had to keep making a new tenon on my chipboard to fit each decreasing size of ring. So these were very, very useful. I'm sure I could make them better, but uh, they did the trick this time. 
I drew this plan in SketchUp over a year ago when I was going to make the cornucopia as a solid vessel and figured all the segment sizes in Excel. After switching to using negative space and wired, the basics of the plan still work. My cornucopia had to be large because I actually want to put fruits in it. The first ring is 10 inches in diameter. With 22 rings and 12 segments each, there are a lot of segments to cut. I like the wedgie sled developed by Jerry Bennett. Plans are on the web, except that I've spaced the arms further apart and make my own angle templates. The stop design also works well. I'd like to design a blade guard. A mark on the wood keeps track of which side is up. After cutting 12 segments, I'm cleaning up the crumbs on the cut edges. I rub each edge of the segment on a sanding board. After sanding, I put all of the segments in a band clamp and inspect the joints. Theoretically, the wedgie sled produces perfect angles. However, that depends on a lot of factors, including perfectly milled wood. When the ring joints are perfect, I can glue up the ring all at once. Otherwise, I have to use the half ring method. For this project, about two thirds are good enough to glue up all at once. This ring needs the half ring method. Here I mark two opposite joints with masking tape so I do not glue them. Then spread glue on all the other joints and put everything back in the band clamp. Before clamping, I put a small bolt in each of the joints without glue as pivots. Then clamp it down. After they're dry, I make pencil marks on the two mating edges. At the sander, I do a light sand on the back so it lays flat and sand off the pencil marks before returning to my glue station to glue the two halves together. I have to repeat this process 22 times. Fortunately, about two-thirds do not require the extra work. One problem is keeping track of all the rings. For this picture, I lost track of the two smallest rings. I use a thickness sander to clean up the rings. However, I have to flatten one side first. With 10 inch rings, my 20 inch sanding plate on the lathe is handy. I don't use it much because momentum spins it off when I power down unless I am very careful. I need to add a set screw. Sanding is just plain tedious, but has to be done. Next is the first pass with the coal jaws. I need to clean up the center of the segments into a good circle that I can use as a mortise later. A box scraper does the trick here. Most of the segment rings fit the coal jaws. Next to split the rings in half and insert the veneer or to offset the joints for strength. I did a couple on the lathe with a parting tool with bad results and a lot of excitement. I switched to the bandsaw but still wanted to keep my fingers on my hands. I made a two height fence, but still worried about my fingers in the center of the ring as it passed through the saw. So I cut another scrap of chipboard and taped the ring to the chipboard with double stick tape. This was as much to protect my fingers as anything else. Then back to my gluing station to glue the two halves back together again. This ring is the first ring without veneer. I'm only offsetting the glue joints to get a side grain joint. However, this glue process only worked well for the first ring. For the others, I'm using my faceplate sets with sacrificial chipboard rings. However, I have to cut a tenon on each chipboard ring to fit my segment rings. The chipboard is nasty. Then glue the sandwich together with tailstock pressure and a few spring clamps. Repeat for all 22 rings. Then I put the rings through the thickness sander again to make them uniform. Notice that the stack is about one-third shorter. Then back to the faceplates to clean up and round over the outer perimeter. For each ring, I had to recut my chipboard tenon again since I cut back the originals going from large rings to small rings. Now for the inner circle for each ring with the coal jaws and backing waste. I first mark the ring width, then cut out the excess wood in the center with my box scraper. Oak is a tough wood. That veneer in the middle made the work harder. Next time I would not use the veneer but still offset the segment joints. Then round over the center on the first side and sand through the grits. And flip the ring over to round over the center and sand. I used a spindle gouge and my skew here. For each segment ring. 
A bath in walnut oil brightens the wood nicely. At long last, the final assembly. I'm using 22 gauge copper wire. Five pairs of wires are coming up from the first ring. I'm inserting one, two, or three beads to encourage the classical cornucopia bend. My cornucopia took a lot longer than I had expected. I'll take it to Thanksgiving dinner and let my granddaughters decorate the table with it. I'm glad it is not solid. The wire allows some variation in shape and it is big enough at 10 inches on the large end to actually put something in it. I like my cornucopia. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Santa is making his naughty or nice list. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.